JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 17th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained the most versus NOC, SEC, CAT and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed somewhat only against the Yen and the Pound. The strengthening of the safe havens Yen and dollar suggests that financial markets traded in a risk-off uh, manner from, sub from some point onwards. Indeed, uh, looking at the performance in uh, global equities, we see that although most major EU indices finished in the green ahead of the FOMC decision, in the aftermath, the US and the Asian ones traded in negative waters, with the, with the only exception being the Dow Jones, which gained 0.13%. Yesterday, the main event on the agenda was the AFOMC monetary policy decision. The committee kept its policy unchanged, keeping interest rates within the 0 to 0 0.25% range, but changed its inflation language, noting that they will aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2% for some time, so that inflation averages 2% over time and the long-term inflation expectations remain well anchored at 2%. With regards to the new economic projections, so officials uh, revised up their GDP and inflation forecasts and uh, downgraded uh, the unemployment rate once, while the new dot plot suggested that, suggested that the interest rates are likely to stay at present levels at least through 2023. That said, looking at the details, we see that one member was in favor of, for a hike, uh, in favor of a hike in 2022 and foresaw rates higher in 2023. Combined with the inflation forecast of 2023, which is at 2%, this shows that some members may not be willing to tolerate inflation above target for, for uh, may not be willing to tolerate inflation above target for long, as pointed in the decision statement. At the press conference, Chair Powell said that the current policy stance remains appropriate but they remain ready to adjust it if economic conditions change. The dollar traded uh, higher and equities slid in the aftermath of the decision, something hinting that market participants were positioned for a more dovish outcome. As we noted yesterday, market chatter suggested that officials may switch their purchases towards more long-dated uh, bonds in order to keep long-term yields low, but there wasn't any reference to that in the accompanying statement. The fact that uh, four members saw interest rates higher in 2023, even with inflation at 2%, may have also served as uh, disappointment to those expecting a more dovish outcome. In our view, the dollar may continue drifting north and equities may continue to slide as investors di digest the decision, but the committee's readiness to do more if deemed necessary may keep those reactions limited. As we noted several times in the past, we believe that the extra loose monetary and fiscal stance around the globe, combined with, uh, with positive headlines surrounding a potential, a potential coronavirus vaccine, may eventually help equities to rebound and put the US dollar under renewed pressure. Now, following the Fed, during the Asian morning today, it was the turn of the Bank of, ja uh, the Bank of Japan to announce its uh, monetary policy decision. As was widely expected, this bank kept uh, its short-term interest rates at uh, minus 0.1% and the target of its 10-year Japanese government bond yields at around 0%. The only notable change was uh, the somewhat uh, upgraded view on the economy. 
Japan's economy remains in a severe state but has started to pick up as business activity gradually resumes, officials noted. While last time they said that the economy was in an extremely severe state. They again barely reacted to the release, confirming our view that due to its safe haven status, it remains mostly linked to developments surrounding the broader investor morale. As for today, uh, the central bank torch will be passed to the, to the Bank of England. This will be one of the smaller meetings where we get only the decision, the accompanying statement and the meeting minutes. With that in mind, and also taking into account that Governor Bailey recently noted that they are not planning to adopt negative interest rates at the moment, we do not expect any action at this gathering, even after inflation slowed notably in August. However, we will dig into the statement in the meeting uh, minutes to see whether the chances for such an action have increased uh, since the last time the bank met. We will also look for hints as to whether officials are thinking to expand their QE program given that negative rates are not uh, appropriate at the moment. One of the members that could vote for an increase even at uh, this gathering may be Michael Sanders, who has recently said that it is quite likely that, um, that the economy will need uh, more stimulus. As uh, for the pound, it may react negatively in case there are strong hints for additional stimulus by the Bank of England. However, its broader path may depend on developments surrounding the political landscape. Remember that last week, the UK pressed ahead with a draft law that will, over, uh, that will override key parts of the withdrawal agreement, despite the EU urging them to scrap such plans, with the plan receiving an initial uh, support in the UK Parliament this week. In our view, all this lessens drastically the chances for any trade accord before the self-imposed October 15th deadline and increases the probability for an ideal Brexit at the end of uh, this year. Although the pound recovered some ground lately against its US counterpart, we are reluctant to call for further advances as the increasing chances for an ideal Brexit may eventually bring the British currency under new selling interest. As for the rest of today's events, during the European morning we get uh, Eurozone's final CPIs for August, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. From the US, we have the initial jobless claims for last week and the housing starts for August. Initial jobless claims are forecast to have uh, declined somewhat to 850,000 from 884,000 the week before, while housing starts are forecast to have slid 1.2% after surging 22.6% in July. Tonight, during the Asian session Friday, we have Japan's national CPIs uh, for August. No forecast is available for the headline rate, but the core one is forecast to have slid to minus 0.4% year over year from 0%. As for the speakers, we have only one on today's agenda, and this is ECB Vice President Luis de Guintos. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.